Hello, and thanks for joining us on In The Zone, our series of interviews from the Middle East Treaty Organization, MATO, digging underneath the debates around banning weapons of mass destruction from the region. I'm your co-host, Anita. And I'm Paul. Today, we're talking with Ding Tongbing from the Chinese Foreign Ministry. He's Director of Arms Control and Disarmament. As a nuclear weapon state, China has a particular responsibility towards states within nuclear weapon-free zones in giving security guarantees. And as a permanent member of the Security Council for Peace and Security in the Middle East and other regions. We're going to be exploring China's unique role and approach to the establishment of the WMD free zone in the region and how this might be evolving in relation to the current developments. <coughs> Mr. Ding, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, to get started, uh, I think I would start with a question. China sits alone amongst the five recognized nuclear weapon states as offering unconditional guarantees that it would never contemplate the use of nuclear weapons against states without them. What would you say is China's approach to the role nuclear weapon free zones play in the global non-proliferation regime? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me to discuss this very important uh, topic. Uh, uh, China believes the establishment of nuclear weapon free zone is of great significance for promoting nuclear disarmament, uh, preventing nuclear proliferation, and also upholding regional peace and security. Uh, uh, China has supported the establishment of nuclear weapon-free zones by non-nuclear weapon states on the basis of voluntary consultations and agreements in accordance with the reality of the region, uh, China has signed and uh, ratified protocols to all treaties on the nuclear weapon-free zones that have been opened for signature, which means China has legally undertaken not to use or threaten to use nuclear weapons against any state party to those treaties. I would like to stress uh, China's commitments are very firm and reliable. Uh, as you might be aware, uh, ever since China possessed nuclear weapons, it has adhered to its un unconditional commitment not to use or threaten to use nuclear weapons against non-nuclear weapon states and the nuclear, nuclear weapon-free zones. As a matter of fact, China remains as the only nuclear weapon state that has made such commitment. In April 1995, China issued a statement reiterating its unconditional provision of negative and uh, positive security assurances to all non-nuclear weapon states. Uh, China also maintains that the international community should negotiate and conclude as early as possible an international legal instrument providing unconditional negative security assurances to all non-nuclear weapon states. We believe the P5 states, the five nuclear weapon states, should take the lead in negotiating and concluding such an equal document. Thank you, you. Chongbing. That's really helpful. Um, following up on that, what immediate steps uh, could the nuclear weapon states take to improve the situation in the way you described? Uh, you may recall the 1995 NPT Review Conference adopted a resolution on the Middle East, which calls upon all states party to the NPT, and in particular, the nuclear weapon states, to extend their cooperation to ensure the early establishment by regional parties of a Middle East zone free of nuclear and other weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems. The 1999 UN Disarmament Commission report also stated that the nuclear weapon states should be consulted during the negotiation of each treaty and its relevant protocols and the facilitate signature to, to and the ratification of the relevant protocols. Uh, in my view, in order to improve the situation, the nuclear weapon states should take steps to facilitate the establishment such a zone. For example, by coming forward with proposals for concrete measures on reducing hostilities, de-escalating tensions, building trust and confidence, and promoting dialogues with a view to creating a sound environment for the establishment of such a zone. Thank you. Um, as you 
have kind of touched on it already. What would do you believe are the main responsibilities of the nuclear weapon states in relations to the WMD free zone project? Well, we think it's very important for the nuclear weapon states to uh, very clearly undertaken not to use or threaten use of nuclear weapons against the non-nuclear weapon states, especially those uh, states parties to the nuclear weapon free zone. And uh, in the case of the Middle East, nuclear weapon free zone or WMD free zone, we think it's also very important for the nuclear weapon states to fulfill their commitments provided in the NPT resolution and the UNGA resolution to facilitate the negotiations and the agreements on uh, the such a zone. Thank you for that, Tong Uh China has shown a greater interest in the Middle East region in recent years. How would you describe China's principal interests in relation to the region and the WMD free zone in particular? Uh, you just mentioned uh, China's interest in the Middle East. The truth is, China has never sought any selfish interests in, in the region. China does not have any historical, historical grievance with any country in the region. And we have established friendly relations with all of them. We always believe that a solution to a Middle East issue will have to be found through friendly consultation among the people of the region. We hope the countries in the region could explore a development path suited to the region's realities and also achieve long-term stability and security. Uh, you might be aware in March this year, uh, State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi had visits to six Middle East countries and proposed a five-point initiative on achieving security and stability in the region. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to highlight two points of the initiative. One is to achieve non-proliferation. The JCPOA as a key part of the international architecture for nuclear non-proliferation uh, has played a very important role to preserve the regional peace and stability. The JCPOA parties are conducting intensive negotiations in Vienna on bringing the US and Iran back to compliance. The pressing task is for the US to take substantive measures to lift its unilateral sanctions on Iran and non-armed jurisdiction on third parties and for Iran to resume reciprocal compliance with its nuclear commitments on this basis, so as to bring the JCPOA back on track. The other one is to build collective security. China proposes holding in China a multilateral dialogue conference for regional security in the Gulf region to explore the establishment of a Middle East trust mechanism. By doing so, we hope to build step-by-step step a framework for collective, comprehensive, cooperative, and sustainable security in the region. When it comes to establishment of a zone free of weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East, China fully understands the legit legitimate concerns of Arab countries. China voted in favor of UNGA resolution entitled convening a conference on the establishment of a Middle East zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction and supported the successful convening of such a conference. China calls on all parties concerned to strengthen diplomatic coordination and take pragmatic measures to reach an agreement as early as possible on the establishment of a, of a zone free of weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East. And also we stand ready to continue to make positive contributions to that end. Thank you. Uh, it, it's really interesting the role China's played there. It's very constructive. Uh, the zone project has been discussed now for almost 50 years and uh, we we still feel that the progress has not been as strong as it could be. What, what do you think the main obstacles to progress have been to this project? Yes, uh, I agree. It's not easy, you know, to uh, establish such a zone, you know, because, you know, it's actually it's unprecedented in the history. And uh, we believe 
the establishment, establishment of such a zone uh, does face a series of challenges in the following areas. Uh, first, the complex security situation and the great power rivalry in the region have posed grave challenges to the establishment of a zone. The second obstacle is legal issues. Uh, Israel's military alliance with the US possessing the largest nuclear arsenal may conflict with the future treaty of the WMD free zone. Besides, some countries in the region are also parties to the African nuclear weapon free zone treaty. The third obstacle is the scope. The WMD zone bans nuclear, nuclear chemical and uh, biological weapons, which has no precedent to follow. Therefore, the negotiation of such a treaty will be more difficult than the other nuclear weapon phase on treaties. The fourth issue is related to verification. Israel has not acceded to the Comprehensive Safeguards Agreement of IEA. Certain countries have not acceded to the CWC and the ver verification protocol of BWC has not been concluded. Hence, the verification of chemical and uh, biological weapons will become an issue. We believe that dialogue and the consultation hold the key to solving this issue. The convening of the UN Conference on Establishment of a Middle East Zone free of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction has been a very good approach. It's regrettable that certain countries have refused to participate in this conference. We hope that the US as a depository state of the NPT could fulfill its due special responsibility and endeavor to con contribute to the establishment of such a WMD free zone in the Middle East. Let's, let's hope that Washington is listening to you. What particular approaches uh, do you believe show the best promise? Uh, we think uh, now it's very realistic, you know, for all parties to support the UN process because, you know, China participated in the uh, first UN conference and uh, we have listened to the voices very carefully from the regional countries. We can uh, feel the very strong desire from those states to establish such a zone as early, as early as possible. We think it's a good starting point. The key is that for other parties uh, related to this issue, you know, could also make the same contributions, especially the other nuclear weapon states. I think uh, for US, you know, which possessing, you know, the largest nuclear arsenal and also enjoy the military alliance with uh, the, with Israel, bears very special, a uh, special responsibility in this respect. Uh, of course, it can make more uh, positive contribution to this process. I think, as the first step, the U.S. Uh, can participate in the next UN conference. Mm. It will be a good starting point. Tongbing, China has positive friendly relations with all key stakeholders in the region and does not have the same challenging legacy of colonialism that other global powers have had in the region, as, as you've already said. What are the obstacles that China experiences in taking a larger bridging and mediating role? Uh, as I see it, uh, first of all, you know, when uh, before uh, directly answering your question, you know, I would like to uh, touch upon the root cause of uh, the establishment, uh, the zone of uh, the nuclear weapon free zone or WMD free zone in the Middle East. We think uh, the root cause of the obstacle is a lack of mutual trust and the deep seated tensions between some regional countries. Uh, over the recent years, China has played a constructive role in facilitating dialogues to seek peaceful settlement of hotspot issues and reduce the deficit of trust in the region. Uh, for example, uh, China has played a major mediating role in preserving the JCPOA and promoting political settlement of this issue. Now the situation has come to another critical juncture. As we speak, now the situation uh, that now the JCPOA parties are discussing in Vienna 
uh, issues of resuming com compliance by both the US and the Iran. And we hope the negotiations can bring the JCPOA back on track. China has also proposed the establishment of a multilateral dialogue platform in the Gulf region on the premise of preserving the JCPOA to start an inclusive dialogue process on regional security issues of mutual interest. We have kept very intensive communications with uh, regional parties and uh, will continue to play a constructive role in promoting political and uh, diplomatic settlement of the regional dispute. So far, our diplomatic efforts have been well received by the stakeholders in the region, as well as the international community. Thank you. What have been some of the responses of stakeholders in the region to China's diplomacy on the zone? Our efforts have been well received by the regional countries, but uh, as you might be aware, you know, the uh, security situation in the region are very complex. We think, uh, you know, the diplomacy needs some time. And also, I think uh, for the time being, we have been engaged with the regional countries uh, very intensively. We hope, you know, we can promote understanding among the stakeholders, especially, you know, to win support from the regional countries to China's initiative. There has been a great deal of frustration expressed across the international community at various points in relation to the lack of progress that there has been. For example, in 2013, the Egyptian delegation walked out of the MPT meeting in Geneva. How would you describe the sense and experience in China in relation to the project? Uh, I think in China's part, we fully understand the frustration shared by the, the Arab countries. I believe uh, the countries outside the region, in particular the nuclear weapon states, should extend staunch support for this project uh, by addressing the legitimate concerns of Arab countries, uh, voting for the relevant UN resolutions and attending the relevant UN conferences. Uh, China will continue to do its own part to promoting the diplomacy. Uh, in my view, the main challenge at present would be the complex geopolitical situation, as well as the U.S. unilateral behavior in the region. Uh, as you may recall, over the recent years, the Trump administration pursued unilateralism withdrew from the JCPOA and exerted maximum pressure on Iran, which escalated tensions and uh, undermined the international nuclear non-proliferation regime and the peace and stability in the region. It also uh, chose not to participate in the UN conference on the establishment of the zone. All this behavior has made it more difficult for us to make progress on the uh, non-proliferation issues in the region and uh, promoting the establishment of the zone. The 10th MPT review conference will be held in August, uh, during which the zone issue will once again become a decisive factor for the success of the conference. Uh, China hopes the US and other relevant parties could bear in mind the larger picture and long-term interests to take concrete measures to consolidate the non-nuclear nuclear non-proliferation regime and refrain from making trouble and further complicating the situation. To bring the JCPOA back on track could be a good starting point in this respect. We hope that with the joint efforts of the country within and the outside region, there, there will be a day when WMD free zone in the Middle East will be turned from a vision into reality. Thank you. One of the reasons why METO exists is to inject a certain degree of optimism to, into a situation that has been plagued with lots of pessimism and difficulties and frustrations. Do you think uh, there's any sense of optimism in Beijing about the prospects for the zone today? I think, uh, you know, in, in Beijing, actually, we are always uh, optimistic, but, uh, you know, uh, for China itself, you know, to to be optimistic is not sufficient because you know to establish such a zone uh, needs collective efforts 
from all stakeholders, especially from the nuclear weapon states. I think, uh, as I mentioned before previously, and as a first step, the nuclear weapons, you know, has to reaffirm their very their, their commitments uh, not to use or threaten to use nuclear weapons against the non-nuclear weapon states, uh, especially, you know, uh, to the state parties to the nuclear weapon free zone. And uh, also, you know, we need to uh, e extend our very firm support to the UN process, and uh, which we believe uh, is very uh, helpful in promoting the diplomacy in this respect. Thank you. What would you believe could possibly improve the chances of this progress? I think, uh, you know, the best chance, you know, lies with uh, all stakeholders to make concerted efforts to establish such a zone. And uh, for regional countries, I think uh, we should encourage the stakeholders to uh, strengthen dialogue with each other to reduce the hostility. And uh, as I mentioned previously, you know, now to bring back uh, to bring the JCPOA back on track would be a very good starting point, especially in terms of uh, preserving the nuclear non-proliferation regime and uh, strengthening uh, peace and uh, stability in the region. And also for the countries outside the region should also play a constructive role uh, in terms of supporting the dialogue among the regional countries, rather than you know to play some very negative role to instigate the uh, hostility in the region. Tong Bin, thank you very much. I think we'll uh, we'll end it there. Um, those uh, were very uh, good and comprehensive answers to the questions, and uh, I want to thank you and your staff and the and the team there for. The contribution that China makes uh, to the um, to the establishment of the, of the zone in the long run, and uh, some of the steps in that direction. Um, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll speak again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tong Bing, for joining us today and for that really insightful discussion. Uh, thank you to all the listeners for tuning in for another episode of In the Zone. Just as a reminder, you can find us online at www.wmd-free.me, where you can subscribe to our newsletter, donate money, or even volunteer to work with us. We're also on social media. Our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram handles are all at wmdfreeme. Our po podcast episodes are uploaded bi-weekly, and you can find those on SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>